So clearly humility is an important key of a great musician, I'm beginning to understand. But as you guys all do know, when it comes to the Boston scene, I think that what I've learned is that your names come up a lot in the Boston scene. Um, and I think it comes up to, because of your musicianship and it also because of the way you guys interact with other music musicians and the way you guys show up. Do you guys feel that to be a collective thing, an individual thing? Like, how do you guys walk around that? Because you guys all do so many different things. I think just, well, when we're from Boston, well, except for Brother Brian, <laughs> so we claim him, we claim him, but um, just been around the city for so long and in the art scene, it's, and the city's so small, it's hard to like not know a lot of people, but I feel like individually, we all do a number of different things, which you branch out. So I like, think that helps a lot, especially in the, the, with the size of the city. Um, yeah, I would definitely say, I mean, like RJ was saying, it's a pretty small city and the music community especially is kind of like tight knit. A lot of people know each other. Um, and especially us four, we, we went to school together, um, high school and college. So it's like all the connections that we build, we kind of pass on to each other. And so I feel like we've, kind of made an effort collectively to kind of showcase our talent in a way that uplifts each other, if that makes sense. That's exactly where I was going to, because I do think that you guys, you're re and particularly for three of you, and I'll inter integrate the other question, but for three of you guys, I, I don't feel like this relationship as you guys, you mentioned, you guys have been together since high school, but middle what school. you, middle school? Yeah. Technically, yeah. technically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, so middle school, right? Yeah. But what I think is really cool about the relationship, if we were to talk about that, because we're, we're always looking at music, we're looking at connection, relationship, and impact in community. And for me, what I see with you guys collectively is that you guys are really tight to the core and the root, but you guys are always open to letting new people come in and out however they flow. And so to me, that's what makes it the most unique, the ability to have the bandwidth to let others come in, but also be rooted enough not to be moved by others. So what do you think attributes to that? Time. Time. We've been doing it. I don't want to say like a long time. I'm only like 24. But <laughs> for a while, we've been playing together since middle school. So it's like we know each other. We're friends outside of music. So that's also like a major, major thing. Um, yeah, we know each other musically, like personally. So it's like it is, it's not going to change. Somebody else coming in is really going to change what we do. You can add to that or... That's just that. So um, we were, I went on my apology tour with Jazz after I heard he and Harold perform, and I came back, and I was like, oh, my God, I see it. I understand <laughs> it. I feel it. But y'all were doing it, and you guys were showcasing it in a different way for a long time. You guys had a deep – some of you guys are even classically trained. So you have some classically trained musician, and then you have the hip-hop genre, then you have the jazz. You have, and then you have your cultures that represent – in your music heavy because some of you guys be DJing all your so like so you guys are just like when you think about that and how people usually box people in for one type of genre of music how do, like how does that even compute in your brain thing that you're you wouldn't fit in anything um I I would say uh, as far as a collective like being in a city uh like Boston and especially going to Boston Arts Academy Berkeley College of Music you see people from different cultures and we've always been people to try to connect with everybody, Asian friends, Spanish friends, black friends, white friends, and everybody under the human race is somebody special and we recognize that, especially in music, because you notice you don't have to speak a language to play piano. Everybody can connect to that. So that's been one thing that's brought us together and We've been able to play every, all types of gigs, salsa, reggae, hip hop, jazz, um, a little bit of everything. So we just try to show respect to everybody. Brian, being the outsider coming in mm -hmm. and um, coming in as a, having your own roots and having your own connection and your own people, because you come in with a, a nice little portfolio yourself. <laughs> so you don't come in here trying to build a portfolio, you come here sharing a portfolio. How, how does it feel integrating into the Boston scene that way? And, and what, what do you think about what I'm saying about the way they move in the Boston scene? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been great so far. Uh, the scene is actually really similar to New Orleans. Um, it's really small. 
and pretty much all the musicians know each other. I mean, there, of course, there's different scenes that are like off the map that people don't really know about. You're always gonna find new musicians that you didn't know of. Like a lot of musicians are still here in Boston that, that tour with people that I wouldn't have thought of. Like that graduated from Berkeley ten years ago. I, similar to New Orleans. So I think it's very similar in that way. The scenes. Um, even myself, I was kind of like this when I was living in New Orleans. Like I would, I would hop on every kind of gig. Um, even though New Orleans is the home of jazz, it's kind of more centered towards the preservation of jazz. So it's, it's a lot of traditional jazz gigs. So I found myself in high school playing a lot of that. Um, I was already playing in church. I go playing in my father's church. I was playing at Noka doing like jazz band and stuff. So it's very similar paths. So, so um, collectively, you guys show up a certain way, you play a certain way, you guys have this frequency. I think Kian did a good job um, talking about the, the, the responsibility of a musician during specific times. Um, you guys are living the same time that he spoke about. You guys are musicians and activists and family members and individuals. Um, how how are these times affecting you, and how are you using your gift in that in these times? Okay, awesome. <laughs> um, I actually put on a rally in uh, Copley Square a month ago. My myself, friend Danny Rivera, you know him. Um, my band New Legacy, and also his his group Civic Youth Summit. So we put on a, a rally on Labor Day weekend. Maybe at least a couple thousand people showed up throughout the whole day. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a great movement. We really just wanted to showcase black art, um, black artists, and that we're not just entertainment. We're not just um, minstrels or people who are just playing for you. Like this is something that's spiritual for us. Um, we even had a choir come out. So yeah, that's kind of how I'm using my voice. Yeah. He said a key word um, for me, which was uh, spiritually, like during this time of like lockdown, like you're forced to be inside and like spend time with yourself. And I feel like through like this time, especially with music, I realized like how like vital and important and connected we really are and how connected music really makes us. So like definitely that connection through music is what I've found through this time. So. With that being said, I think it's a perfect segue that I feel like this is going to be a dream become a reality because I finally get to see Key and Harold and you guys play together. So it's going to be a, an amazing experience, but we want to take the time to appreciate you guys and say that we see you, we appreciate you, and that what you're doing is not in vain and making an impact. And so that's what this is all about. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.